So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise in your breath, in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you all, in your breath, in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you all. Jesus, the King of Kings, 
Jesus. Come on, we don't just serve some 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 dude that's out there running the mouth. We serve the king. Yes, right. Come on. Come on. This morning I'm blessed to have my brother. I, I want to invite my brother. He stepped into the church a little bit over a year ago. He came in and he said, you know what? I just want to be fed. Man. I just want to, I want to sit back and, and, and let, 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 let me see what God wants to do in me. And he came with the word and he knew his word and he came with the hunger, he came with the appetite. And, and his, 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 his pastor watched and we watched and we, we, we seen how, how, how loyal he was. And I don't want to say loyal, but how hungry he was. Come on. Say. Right. How, how, how he didn't come to serve, but he came to serve for the kingdom. So I asked him, that's, I was praying, God, there's, I want somebody to come and give a, a testimony. I want a man of God to come up here and say what God has done in their lives and how God is moving in their lives and, and out of their obedience and their submission, how God's been moving. And he put his name in my heart. Come on, amen. So, Brother George, can you come and give us a testimony? Hey, man. You know, it's always good to come up here and share what God is doing in my yeah, life. Yeah, you know, I could go on and tell you stories about my past and how I grew up and what I did. But I got testimony in here. <laughs> you know? I was in, in camp with my brother right here many years ago. And then I got RKC in the back. I got my uncle. I got my man. dad, Manny. They know my history. They know my past. <laughs> but I want to share what God has done yeah, in my good, life. Right? Since, since I got saved. You know, since he transformed me. When I gave myself to him, you know, I went to a home in 2011, a men's home, and I learned there how good God is. I learned there how loyal he is to me Amen. and what he has for me. Now, I'm going to share the scripture real quick before I go on. It's in um, John 13, 34 and 35. It says, so now I'm giving you a new covenant, a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. Amen. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciple. Amen. I learned to be a disciple of the Lord. Oh. I learned to submit to him oh. and let him have his way in my life. Oh. And, I, and this walk hasn't been easy. You know, and, and, this, and this, these few years, I landed back in prison as a servant of God. You know, I, I, I found myself in a, in, a, in a county jail thinking, man, God, why am I back here? Mm -hmm. Even before turning myself in, I, I was on a freeway going like 120 miles per hour. I wanted to commit suicide, brothers. I knew I was going to go to jail. I did not want to be back in jail. I was tired of being in jail. God had been so good to me. And I was like, man, here I go. I want it again. I'm going to go back behind these walls. I said, I don't want to be bad. I only wish, wish my own enemy to be behind the walls. Come on, brother. Come on. I tried to turn my car into a truck and I couldn't move. My car turned off. Wow. And I landed up from the best thing all the way to the side of the road. How oh, that happened, I don't know. I'm just sitting there crying to God, telling him, God, help me. Come on, brother. No matter what's going to go on my life today, help me. Amen. Help me through this situation, God. Show me your love and mercy now. And I went there and turned myself in, and everybody said, don't worry about it, it's just a threat, you're going to come home. No, they knocked me up. No bail, no nothing. But I'll tell you one thing, it's the first time I went to court telling the judge I was at fault. I'm, I'm guilty. Instead of trying to lie my way out of it, trying to get witnesses to come in and talk for me. Come on. Trying to tell my wife, come and tell him I didn't pay you. None of that came to my mind. You know what, George? God was speaking, you're going to go in there and you're going to submit. Right. You're going to do the time for the, what you did. There I am in county jail again. This, uh, it was an Easter Sunday, and they said there's no, you no church. But this little lady came one, the early Easter morning and says, I'm running the Catholic church. Who wants to come? I jumped up, and I went to church. I went in there. It was the most experience, best experience I ever had. She washed all our feet. I mean, look at my feet. My feet are ugly. <laughs> but she washed all our feet. She came in on an Easter Sunday, told us all to take our shoes off, and she washed our feet. And I think, wow, this thing on Easter Sunday is in here washing our feet, and she's talking to us how Jesus washed the disciples' feet. How Jesus loved them so much, he washed their feet to show the kindness 
that he had and that love he had and his scripture stuck with me. The love he had for me. I was going to go back to prison and go to church. So there I go. I go to Ironwood, Sea Yard. I'm going go to go to church that Sunday and the homies are just looking at me, watching me every move. There's lifers that I know from back in the day. They tell me, hey, what are you doing? They're giving me stuff I don't want. Offering me stuff I don't use. I say, you know what? I'm not here for that, bro. I'm here to right, church. That's it. I still faithful to God. And after four years and a half, I only did 18 months out of the four years. Yeah. Yeah. They brought me home. I came home, straight back to the men's home again that I was in before. Went straight. On Christmas Day, I got released, brothers. Amen. On Christmas Day, my daughters picked me up. They said, Dad, we're taking you straight to the home. I said, oh, this week, we're ground first. It's all about wow. yeah. They were worried about their dad. They see, right, they, they yeah. see their dad doing good. They see what God was doing in their dad's life prior to me going back to prison. They didn't want that. They didn't want the old dad back. Right. Their old dad mistreated them, made false promises, did drugs before even them, spent the, 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 the milk and egg money before I even bought groceries. Come on. I was dirty. They were sitting there hungry, bro, so I could get high. Right, man. They don't want that dad coming home from prison just go back to his home because they seen what God was doing in that time. So we had dinner and, and lunch with my mom, my sister, and they took me straight to the men's home. Amen. This was in 2019. And I've been back serving God hard ever since. Amen. God will do a good thing in your life. Yes, he is. He'll do it, it's just you gotta be loyal to God. Amen. You gotta show your faithfulness. Coming into this church over a year ago and, and, and coming under Pastor Omar and Jose and all the leaders here in the ship, my, my uncle. Amen. You know, and just yeah. be loyal and, and just be faithful. Just sitting there getting the word and being fed and hearing the messages coming in. Our men's groups. Amen. You know, the whole year we're hearing all the men and what they went through in life. The powerful testimonies. Come on, son. You know what I mean? God gives us that testimony. Amen. You know, and you're going to meet people from the past. Amen. What are they going to see in you? Right. Are they going to see God? Oh. Or are they going to see the oldness? I want people to see the Lord in me. Amen. I want people to know that I'm serving a great God and He's transforming my life. Amen. That He's doing something great in me that He could do for others. Amen. You know, now I'm working in, in, in a field where I'm helping others. Amen. I'm a certified counselor. Amen. Amen. Wow. So any of you, any of you, I'm already $50 a session. <laughs> 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 He put me, he, no, he, God showed me that you know all, all your life you've been a counselor, you've been in training. Wow. Now he put me in a place where I, I, I'm, I, I'm actually sharing with the little the little homies and the little the little youngsters thinking they're all crazy and all. But when you they sit down and talk to me and they hear who I really am and what I went through in life, they trip out. Wow. And they don't see that. I don't wear short sleeves, shirts, I wear long sleeves all the time, so they don't see my tattoos. I'm not flashing something, a persona that right. I see. Oh, he's in prison. No. I don't even know that I've been in prison. Some of my co-workers couldn't see that I've been in prison. Until I start sharing with somebody, saying, wow, George, you were in prison? Yeah. Uh, you know, and the way I speak to them, the way I talk to them, the way I communicate, yeah. to the word of God. Amen. And once, the, once they open up that, the, the God in that in that place, I'm like, oh, here we go. You're going to get it now, brother, because you just opened, you just said you're a Christian, you're a believer. Well, this, is what, this is what God is about. Amen. This, is what, this is what you're going to know. You know, then God has a word for you. Right. And it opens up. And so everybody, oh, George is a Christian. Lord, yeah. And that's why I have to even be more about Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, you yeah, have to be more watching. You know, I always put this in my heart. God is always watching me now. Oh, oh yeah. I can't hide from God anymore. Now, I, can't hide behind, I can't hide behind the dumpster and get high anymore. Because now I know God is right, watching me. You know? I can't hide in the backyard and hide in the closet and get high because God is watching me. Don't and yourself. I leave that in my heart. That's if he's watching me. So if he's yeah. watching me, how about those around me? Even more so. Oh, wow. To wait to see what I do wrong, to say yeah. one word wrong, or say a bad word wrong. Oh, George, you cuss? No, that doesn't come out of the mouth anymore. Man. I mean, you don't hear, you don't hear that, 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 that kind of a camera coming from me because I have to be on my P's and Q's. Man. And you show me how to love. You show me how to give Man. that back. Wow. You show me how to love and how to let his back go through me. Amen. When that scripture hit my heart, I got I got a new commandment. You know, I got to love like he did. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> but when you get through that and you show that love, it's, it's, it's good. 
Yeah. It's good because I mean God recognizes. Yeah. Yeah. He sees. Yeah. He sees your heart and he sees how much you really want to love and how much you're gonna really care for somebody. Yeah. And it's hard caring, you know. It's, it's man. Come on, I need Especially when you got family just wanna talk about you and talk behind your back and you know, and then you see them on a, 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 a holiday or something, you're like, oh. That's one of our shirts again. I think we'll yeah. say for a long time. Yeah. 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 I told you guys, man, it's a mighty man of God right there. Yeah. Since he stepped foot in here, you can see the glow with that Jesus. Since he stepped right. foot in here, he hasn't just talked the talk, but he's walked the walk. Amen. Powerful testimony, man. And you know what? You guys hear me there? You guys hear me there? Yeah, awesome. Right, right. I just want to encourage everybody that we all got that testimony. Right. We've all been through that stuff. We all have something to share. We all have something that God's done through us and it, it, it is doing through us. Amen. Yeah. And, 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 and as long as we're here, the job isn't done. That's right. The task is still at hand. The mission is still in effect. Come on. Until we stand before our Heavenly Father, is the mission over and completed? And we all hope that when we stand before Him, that we're hearing those words. Well Amen. done. So, yeah. well, good, well done, good and faithful. Yes. Come on. Yeah. That's, right. That's what I pray for. I pray. Pastor said something so powerful this morning as we were in prayer. It's, it's not that, you know what, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to be, you know, last week we heard a tra the, the, the service of uh, be transformed. It, you know, I'm transformed not just because I want to guarantee my fire insurance, but because I want God to use me and I want God to move through me and I want to hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Come on. So this morning, man, this morning I... Uh, I've been given the the, 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 the honor, the pastor gave me the opportunity to close up this year's men's discipleship. Hey Amen. Come on. It's a blessing what God's been doing here. Yeah. The pastor came with his vision a little over a year ago, and he came with his vision that, you know what, I, the, I don't want to have pastors up here. I want to have the men of God that have been transformed. I want to have the men, the disciples, those that are being raised up to do the, the kingdom work because they've got a word. Right. And throughout the year, uh, it, it, God's been faithful. He's been bringing people, people that have been standing up to, to, to take that step, to take that, that, that step and that initiative to, to see what God's going to do through right. them. So this morning, as, as I've been in prayer, as, as we close out the year, as, as we went to last week's service, being transformed. Amen. More than meets the eye was the title, being transformed. I said, well, once we're transformed, how do we keep that transformation? Come on. See, there's more than just, hey, you know what, this is... This is it. I'm transformed. I'm done. God, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to kick back. I'm the easy boy. I'm going to recline and I'm going to let God be God. Now there's, we take the authority. Come on. So God gave me this word authority. And, 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 and I want to read this morning. Uh, and this is, uh, I got a verse that's in the Amplified. Uh, can you turn that down a little bit to me? The lapel. I got the. Man, you hear me there? Just hit the main a little bit. I think you took me down too much. It's no worse. So those words, I got Colossians 2.15, and, and, and as I read this, and I read it in different scriptures, different translation, I thought the Amplified Version kind of said, fit best of what God is trying to speak to me this morning. So this morning, if you got your Bibles, if you guys can turn to pages, uh, or not pages, a uh, book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Now the Amplified Version reads as this. It says, when, when he had disarmed, disarmed the rulers and the authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captains in his triumphant possession, procession, having triumphed over them at the cross. 
With that, I want to tie this Ephesians 4.18 and it says, that is why the scriptures say when he ascended to the heights, he led the, the crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you this morning, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Father, we thank you for what you've accomplished on the cross for us, the sinner, Lord. For us, the broken individual, Lord, that yes. came to you, Lord, Father God. Lord, we pray this morning, Lord, that as I stand behind the cross, you would just give me the words, that I would just be the best of the conduit, Lord, Father God. But this morning, Lord, that your word would minister to us, that your word would resonate in our hearts, that yes. we would not turn the same way we came, Lord, Father God, but we, we would be encouraged, Father God, that we would grow in understanding and grow closer to you. Yes. Amen. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on. Let's close it up already. So, you know, God is good, man. We know, we know, right? But we, sometimes we need to be reminded of yes. the authority that we're walking. That's right. Come on. And I say this because I, you know, I, does anybody walk perfect here? No. no. Come on. Man, come on. Somebody. I'm about to say, can you come up? Here? <laughs> right, come you on. know, we, we all right. fall short, and, and, and we all fall short of God's glory. And you know what? Sometimes there's some things that we struggle with, and there's some desires that we want, and there's some ways that we want to move in. That you know what? We're we're being worked on. See, he's a potter. We're the pot, and he's shaping us. He's molding us. He's cutting this away. He's chipping that away, and he's doing his work. He's doing his handiwork. But this morning. The word authority. We've all heard of a power of attorney, right? Yeah, come on. We all heard of, of that. And, and maybe some of us have had that, that honor or, or, or that duty or that responsibility given to us. You know, when somebody was passing away, maybe they were in their last breaths. Maybe they weren't in the right state of mind. And you were given a power of attorney over them. You were given the authority to make the decisions or to act on the behalf of that individual or that person. Jesus has left us with the, uh, the kind of authority on this earth when he went to heaven. He left us with a, a kind of power of authority, a power and authority. This is what Jesus left us. He left us with his Holy Spirit. Right. Come on. He left us with every spiritual blessing, the Bible says. Best of all, he left us with his word. He left us Man. written instructions yes, right. Come on. on how to walk this walk. Amen. If you ain't reading it, you best get start reading it. <laughs> Even if it's one verse, one chapter, this is how you, how, this how you grow. That's right. right. Come on. John 4, 13 says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it for you so that the son can bring glory to the father. Amen. You know, I've always asked that, and, I, and as, I, as, as I pray, and before I prepare for these things, and I get the word together, I say, Lord, I don't want me to come up here and speak of anything of me. I, I'm, I'm broken. I'm being shaped. I'm being molded. I'm a work in progress. I walk around with a sign that says under construction. Baby, That's right. Come on. Because there's still God's chipping stuff. Why? That's right. right. Come on. I said, if this can glorify your kingdom, if this can reach one individual, if this can touch the heart and encourage somebody to go a little deeper with you, to grow in the relationship with you, to have a greater understanding with you, then let you be glorified. Yeah. yeah. Let me be that vessel. See, I always wondered why. Anybody ever wonder this? Why God uses the homeboy? <laughs> That's right. Why God uses that soldier that was out there in the world, why God uses those individuals in the world, they kind of rebelled and, and they wanted to be out there boldly for the world. Because he wants us to use that same authority right. that we yeah. ran the streets with for here. Yeah, come on. Man. He wants us to have that same authority and that same hunger, the desire to go and, and, and wake up, stay up late ministering the gospel. Amen. Stay up late reaching that brother that's broken. You know, wake up early, not, you know, no longer hungover, but hungry to go to these yeah. men's gatherings. Come on. Hungry to go to prayer, hungry to seek God. That's right. This is why he uses you and me. And I sit there and I wonder like, man, Lord, me, who the world thought I would be good for nothing. Come on. See, I, I know, I know, I didn't crease my pants today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't come on my penalty this morning, but just like Brother George, man, I go to work every day. I wear long sleeves every day. I, 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 I'm the past is the past. The Bible yeah. says that I've been made new. Amen. Come on. It's no longer me. 
I don't want to look back and say, yeah, that, I remember those good old times because the good old days are now. That's right. Yeah. Yes, come on. That's right, come on. Well, on earth, he, he constantly, Jesus constantly modeled how it was to take the authority. See, he came into his, his, his father's house and, and he said, this is a den of thieves. And he came in with the authority and he kicked everybody out. That's right. See, yeah. I think the church is, 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 is kind of, I don't, don't want to say dumbified, but made Jesus look like if he was some, just a, a loving dude. Yes, he is. But he had of authority. Yes. Yeah. You think about it, he was men. If some dude walked up in this door right now and started flipping chairs, are we all going to run? <laughs> no. Or is someone you going to tackle them or grab them? What's his, about? What's his problem? So that just imagine the kind of authority he stepped into the room. Yeah. The kind of authority that we should have as men. The kind of authority that we should have over those things that we keep falling short of. The kind of authority that says, you know what? I'm going to take back my relationship with my wife. Amen. I'm going to go back to my children and redeem and restore that, that stuff that I once fell short in. The kind of authority that steps into your job and says, you know what? These are my standards, yes. and I don't compromise for nobody. Man, and right. if you close this door, God will open up a door. Amen. Door. Come on. Come on right? That's right. The kind of authority that when you step into the room, that the demons yes, Come on. Come on. That's the kind of man of God we need to be. Yes, Amen. The kind of man that says, you know what? If God is for me, who could be against me? Yes, right. Come on. You step into the scene. It's no longer with the gangster lead, right? right? Yes. But with the power of the Holy Ghost that's living in you. Yes. The kind of power that says, you know what? These are the standards as a man. And, and, and for me in my house, we will yes. serve the Lord. Come on. This kind of authority came out in the name of Jesus. It, it comes to us in the name of Jesus. Our authority comes from him. Most importantly, our authority comes in the identity that we are in him. Amen. And if someone was to come to you and ask you, who are you today? Who are you? What is your identity? What would your response be? Would you identify as, as a parent, as a grandfather, as a great-grandfather? Would you identify with your trade? Would you identify saying, hey, you know what, I'm an ex-con. I'm a three-striker. I'm a felon. Who would you identify as? Would you identify as an ex-addict? Unfortunately, sometimes we identify even as being a disabled individual. Unfortunately, sometimes we identify with the disabilities and, and we allow our passes to define us. Come on, right? People often identify themselves with, with past circumstances and current situations, past failures, or past accomplishments. See, God takes us from glory to glory. That's Man. right. God's taken us from the rubbish. Whatever we identify in the world, whatever the tattoos meant, whatever the homeboy said, whatever the world thought of us, whatever maybe your, your, your old teacher said, you amount to nothing, or, or your, even your own family members, come that on. doesn't identify us no more. We've been right. Yes, there. right. Come on. Come on. We, 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 we've been washed by the blood. Amen. That Amen. means he came and he, my state, clean. That's right. Yeah. Right? He's, he cleaned it, and now, now my story begins. Come on. The story of what God is going to do. Amen. Yeah. Come on. The story of how bondages are broken. Generational curses stop. Now, now it, it leads to my, my daughter, my son, my grandchildren, and generations change and transform yes. this world. Yes, thank you, Lord. Because yes. we need it. Yes, we do. Come, Come on. on, somebody. Amen. Thank God that we've been set free. Yes. That we've been made new. John 8 36 says that if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. That's right. Man, indeed. You are truly free. There's nothing that that that's it. You're truly free. There's nothing to debate about it. Nothing. It's been paid for yes. in full. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Come on, somebody. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's been paid in full. Come on. Paid in full. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17. So Come this on. means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Thank you, Lord. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. Yes. Right. The Come chapter on. begins. Yes. Situations may have confronted us and circumstances may have manifested, but I want to tell you it's no longer your identity. That's right. Come on. Right. We should understand that our profession isn't our identity. Our family role, as important as it is, it is in our identities. We, should, we shouldn't identify as, as doctors, pastors, drivers, janitors, plumbers, technicians, oh. construction workers. Come on, the plumber out there. <laughs> Come on. Our job skills and our trades do not identify us. That's right. That's your trade. It may be good. It may provide. It puts the food on the table. It pays the bills. But ultimately, our, identify, our, our identity is that we're children of God. Yes. Yes, we're citizens of heaven. Yes. That's John 1.12 and Philippians 3.20. So now it's time for us to represent. See, when we were in the world, we were quick to represent the zone we lived in, the neighborhood we lived in, the blocks that we ran, the streets that we that we we ran with, the clique that we ran with, the homeboys that we backed up, right? Now it's time to represent for the kingdom of heaven. Now it's time to represent for, for the king of kings. That's right. Yeah. It's no longer I who live, but he who lives in me. Amen. Right? So if he lives in me, who am I representing? That's right. Man, when I step in the word, who am I representing? When I get home and my, my children, my wife see me, who am I representing? Right. Who that? Or am I only representing in these four walls? Uh oh. Come on now. Or maybe who that? we got a knocking on six walls here, right? <laughs> we understand that Romans 8.31, and like I said, it, 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 what shall we say? What greater things is this? If God is for us, who can be against Amen. us? Amen. That's we right. Know, we, we need to know, we need to possess this. This authority. The enemy can't take from us. That's right. right. That's right. This authority has been given to us as a gift. I didn't, I don't know. I didn't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. But through God's grace, he gave it to me. Yes. Yeah. Through God's grace, he said, here, son, run with it. Man, run with it. See, we were quick in the streets to get something and come on, let's go. That's what we got to do with the Bible. That's right. That's what come we got to do with the word of God. Come on, let's go. Who's with me? Right. And we should all stand. Amen. Right. Come on. You know what? Maybe maybe you ain't called to go out and evangelize. Maybe you ain't called to be a pastor. But you know what? Every one of you here has a testimony. That's right. Come and on. the enemy can't rob you of that testimony. Right. Everybody's been through something for a reason. Because God's had a plan and a purpose for every individual to encourage either your loved ones, your family members, your neighbors, your co-workers, yeah. or somebody randomly that gives us divine encounter. That's right. We all got a testimony. Yes, sir. Come on. We as humanity have been given dominion over the earth. See, when, when Adam came and he sinned, and when Adam came here to this earth and, 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 and God brought him to be, the word of the Adam is, is translated in Hebrew as Adam, literally meaning humans. So God gave humanity all dominion. Yes. In the book of Genesis. Dominion is defined as a sovereignty, a control, a power, an authority, a jurisdiction. Dominion is simply the right to govern and rule or determine. This is how we run our, 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 our cities, our household, our jobs. Psalms 115 says, The heavens belong to the Lord, but, the, but he has given the earth to humanity. That's right. Come on. See, while we're here, we have a task. We have a right. mission. We have a job. We have an obligation. Man. You know, this isn't a, a, a job or a task that when we feel like we want to take it on, we'll do it. When I feel like being a Christian, I'm going to put on my Christian suit and go out and be a Christian man. Come on. But when I feel like being in the world, I'm going to go out and stay late and drink a little something and smoke a little something and act a certain type of way and act the fool. Come on. That don't work that That's way. That's right. So don't. You know, this morning as I prayed to God, what I put what you want. Amen. 
Amen. So I'm going through this. I'm saying, God, you know what? You got a different plan. Come on. Right? <laughs> the one who redeemed us, our Heavenly Father. To simplify the reality, Jesus came and reincarnated for you and me, the sinner. He came and fulfilled what the scriptures uh, tell us. He came and, and he lived a life of righteousness. And he did. lived a life that, that you know Jesus. what? He did not sin. He was perfect. He yeah. came and, and he redeemed us and restored us. He died on the cross for you and me, yes. the sinner. Thank you, Lord. Right. Not when we were perfect. Right. Not when we started reading our Bible. But while we were still sinners about it. Wow. 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 He came and redeemed us. He came and forgave us. He died for you and me. This morning, I, I want us to understand that life as a believer isn't just in these four walls. The path that he's given us, the authority he's given us, the, the righteousness that we now walk in, it, also, it isn't only here. It's everywhere. He's given us authority to be an overcomer, not just in this church, but even in our house. Amen. Right. Even in our jobs. Even in the streets. Amen. And for my brother, even in the gym. Come on. That's my brother, I, I met my brother in the gym. With a Joe here. Uh, met him in the gym. Yeah. I seen him working out Ooh, and, and giving it all. <laughs> I said, you know what? God's not finished, man. That's Doing right. something. You know what? Everything you're going through, he you ain't finished. That's right. Right. There's still a purpose. There's still a plan. You draw your strengths not from those ways, but from Jesus. Come, Come on. on. That's right. Because of Christ's victory, we're not to be suppressed. We're not to be under anything. We're not to be oppressed. We're not to be enslaved. We're not to be in bondage. And as men, sometimes we come into situations where we feel that, you know what? I feel a little depressed. Okay. You know what? All of a sudden, things don't go your way at work, and, and it seems as doors are closing, and we start to worry. I'm guilty. Come on. Come on. That's right. I think we're all guilty. Amen. That's right. Come on, brother. I'm with you there. Amen. You know, all of a sudden, there's a, a shift change in, in whatever you're doing at home or, or whatever's going on in your neck of the woods, and, and, and we begin to, to feel like a worry. We feel like uh, maybe there's a little oppression coming in. Right. But I'm here to tell you that, you know what? God's given us the authority to oh, try through all those things. Come on. Right. God's given us the authority to be the head and not the tail. Come Amen. on. That's right. The authority to be more than over Yes. Come on. Amen. Come on, right? Amen. Amen. Now, under the pressures of life, under the stresses and the situations, we break those things with the blood of life, Christ. Oh, yeah. As believers, we can end up under circumstances of life, but know that we've been given the authority to overcome it all. Amen. Yeah. Right. Come on, right. somebody. Amen. I like that. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's right. See, that's the authority that we need. Oh, yeah. That's it. If, if Jesus walked in the room right now, we would be amazed. And we, you know what? All of a sudden, we'd step our game up. <laughs> That's right. Can we hear That's right. Come on. All of a sudden, we're holy saints. <laughs> you know, all of we, our shirts are tucked in. We're all guys. Nice. You know, what? You know what? This is this is the thing. Is that He lives in you. Amen. Amen. He's with you at all times. Amen. He's never abandoned you or forsaken you. The Bible says. Amen. So if He's with you and, and He's walking life with you and alongside you, why are you not acting a fool? Come on. That's right. Appreciate you that. You know that guy comes in the streets and cuts you off. Oh, oh you can tell him he's number one, but with the real thing. Come on, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's be transparent, guys. Sometimes Thank you, Jesus. we live in this flesh. My pastor teaches us a yes. in that flesh. We live in it. Right. That's why we need to die to it. Come on. That's right. It's very easy to give into those things. Yes. Sir. It's very easy. See, the Bible teaches us, Paul teaches it as he writes that, you know what, that he didn't know what sin was until the law came. Come on. See, we didn't know that some of us 
We may have been doing things that we didn't. We thought we were okay. Mm. <clears throat> but now the flesh urges for those things. Yes, Come on. It does. All of a sudden, a pretty woman walks by, and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on, you man. We've been here, right? Yeah. You understand that, right? Sometimes we think with the wrong head. Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, come Appreciate on. It. Come on. But you know what? We crucify that day. Yes, come yeah. on. We put on our armor day. Yes. We ask God, you know what? Lead the way. That's right. I'm not a driver no more. I'm a passenger. That's right. Amen. But just because I'm a passenger doesn't mean I don't got a purpose. Come on. Doesn't mean that, you know what? I can't, I can't say, you know what, God? This is where you need me to get off and do this? Let's do it. Come on. If you're with me, who can stand against me? That's right. Amen. If you're alongside with me, we're going to battle together. We're going to battle to the end. Amen. See, some of us said that, right? Blood in, blood out. Well, now we've been washed by that blood. That's yeah. right. Come on. Now there's no blood out. There's only a promise of eternity. Yeah. That's right. Come on. That's the kind of blood out that we have now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. The blood of Jesus. That's yeah. right. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Come on. The reality is that what goes on around us sometimes can hinder us. But I want to tell you, it's not what goes on around us, it's what we let in. Come on. Amen. That's right. It's what we allow to whisper in our ears. Oh, okay. This is why authority is so that. important. Because when we have the authority, we block that noise out. Yes, come on. When we have the authority, we say, you know what? In Jesus' name, I'm going to step into this job opening, and I'm going to get the promotion. Come on. In Jesus' name, even though I'm a dropout, I'm an ex-con, I'm a, I'm a three-striker, even though the world says I'm good for nothing, God's got a plan and a purpose. Come and on, amen. Said, in the authority, I said, you know what? My life and my relationship with my wife may be a little sketchy, a little rocky, but you know what? I rebuke that in Jesus' amen. name. Amen. But we're going to live like we just met. That's Come right. On, somebody right. Like, we're going to be back in the honeymoon stage. Come on. We all know the honeymoon stage. Yeah. Yeah. Very, right? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Come on. That's Come right. On. I try. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna break the world. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> For this reason, we can be strong in the Lord because He has delegated His authority Come on. to us. He's given us something. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. If somebody gave you a Corvette. A Ferrari. Somebody gave you a house. Somebody gave you a million dollars. We just gonna let it sit there, right? Somebody right. gave you a vacation home. Somebody gave you a vacation. You're just gonna let it go to waste. Well, God's giving us something great. Come on. Yes, he has. He's given us an authority to travel every circuit. Yes. He's given us the authority over all the dominion. He's given us an authority to be the man and lead the way. That's right. You know, if those that joined us up in the mountains, uh, we went to a retreat a few weeks ago. The pastor said something. It's time to put your pants back on. Come on. It's time to take your pants back from the woman. Come on, man. It's time as men to take the authority. It's time to step into what God has for you yes. and lead the way. You know, we wonder why our, 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 our generations are changing. Because yeah, maybe me as yeah. us as men are failing. Mm. Come on. Maybe that's what we need. More mighty men. Amen. And and, and when, when one mighty man becomes multiplication, yes. this disciple. Yes. Yeah. One leads to another. That leads to another. That leads to two more. That leads to four. Yeah, multiplication. We serve a God of multiplication. Come on. We serve a God of order. And that's what he's orchestrating. See, we, I, I, I mentioned this. I hear everybody say, the end times are here. The end times are here. Look at the signs. Look at the news. I can't disagree with it. But that don't matter because our mission ain't over. That's right. right. Come the on. end times can be around the corner, but it ain't here yet. Right. right? The end times can be a couple days away, but it ain't here yet. So our mission is still in effect. Our yes, mission come is on. still there. Yes. Yeah, right. We need to know when we need to start walking in this authority. We have been given 
this power and we need to exercise it. We as the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Jesus is the head and we are the body. And he has authority. And his authority is perpetuated perpetuated through the body. Sorry, guys. Doesn't know there sometimes. When Jesus rose from the dead, he transformed us. And he gave us, he, he, when he rose from the dead, he, he transferred his authority on earth to the body. Amen. We are the body. Amen. Yes, sir. Come on. Authority. Ephesians 2 6 says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. See, we're up there already. The Bible says that he's written our name in the book of life. Man, come on. I think the only way that we can lose the salvation here is if we reject it. Because oh. it's a gift. Yes. Obviously, anybody can reject the gift. Right. Yeah. So with that authority, knowing that he is seated up there interceding for us, and we're there alongside with him, that we know that where our authority comes from. Yes, we do. Come on. Amen. If we are children of the Most High, we've been heirs of this. This is something that it wasn't given to me. I was inherited into it. That's right. Come on. Right? Ooh, you know what? But some of us, our daddy may not be rich. He may he not have left us, uh, you know, <clears throat> acres of land like some people. He may have not left us a bunch of zeros in a bank account. But he, he gave us something better. That's right. Sir. He, the Bible says that where he went, he's preparing a place for you. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah. That's got to be a big old mansion, man. Yes. You know, with gold and rose. This morning, I believe what the Lord has placed in my heart to close. And Timmy, if I can borrow you for a second, where you at? You know, I put so much together. I think God led me another way. How many agree God is Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 That's right. Good. All the time. Amen. Man, who's the DJ over there? Come on, DJ. <laughs> Make it all mix. This morning, I believe what the Lord has placed in my heart is, is to have us understand as new creations, we're put in a position of authority. And for anybody who, who works in the workforce and you're put in a position of authority, you know that there's people that are going to follow. For us, it's our family. Yes, come on. For us, it's that brother in Christ that may come to you for inspiration or, or come for you, come to you for advice. Yeah. Or comes to you for prayer. That's right. See, you may not see it, but everybody's watching. Amen. Yeah, come on. Everybody. Yes. Maybe there's that brother that sometimes says, you know what? I've got family, but I got my brother I can reach out to. What kind of advice are we going to give them? What kind of authority are we going to remind them of? In order for us to understand the authority, we must know what it is. This morning, I think we have a great understanding of what it is. Amen. The authority that was given. Yes. The authority from above. We must know who it belongs to. That's us. Amen. Amen. Say, everyone, what everybody say, it belongs to me. It belongs to me. Come on, somebody. The next time we feel oppressed, we feel that there's something going on in the spiritual, because that's where it manifests from. We right. take that initiative and take that authority. We said, it belongs to me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We know that. It. Come on, we know how we walk in. This authority comes from the commission. Yes. It comes from the power of Jesus. It comes with our encounter with Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, when we came broken Amen. to that altar, for some of us in the street, for some of us in the jail cell, we had that encounter. Yes. Amen. Amen. We cried out to Jesus. Amen. And he gave us that authority. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know it's all good when you never know, right? Time. Yeah. So this morning, I, I, I want to open up the altars. I think as men of God for this year to come, 
Maybe there's some things that we, we've been struggling with. Maybe there's some things that we've been dealing with. Maybe there's some things that are still lingering in our walk. Maybe there's some, some stuff that we need to take the initiative and take the authority to remove it from our lives. I know there's some things in my life that I know that, you know what? God has given me the power and the authority to get over it, to overcome it. Man. So as we open up the altars, man, we can all have you stand and worship too. But there's something that's still there. Something that you need help in. Something you want to leave at the foot of the cross. Something that you're tired of looking around. Something that you're tired of going through. It seems like the answer will you keep going around and around. It's like a merry-go-round. You're running in circles and it keeps coming around. You just can't see the kingdom. Maybe it's, it's, it's a sickness. Maybe it's, it's something you're fighting in the body. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe you're struggling. I'm giving a little bit more. Trust in Lord to go, the Lord to go a little deeper in the pockets. Maybe you're looking for a promotion, a job opportunity. Maybe it's an addiction. Right. Come on. We struggle. As men, we can be real, we can say that we struggle. Maybe it's a little less phone time and more of Jesus. Maybe it's a little less of the Netflix series and a little bit more of prayer. Whatever it is, you don't have your captain. So this morning, if you're bold enough, I don't want to leave that. If you're bold enough to say enough is enough, this altar is open. And God's going to meet you. Here. That bondage is going to be broken. Those chains are going to be broken. That breakthrough is here today. Salvation is here today for the sinner. There's no reason why all the Hallelujah. So, man, let's just worship. The tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. I have to be Lord. All that the Hallelujah. I need your heart, Oh, and by the way, sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of the Do you think that's what a dream from the way? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Behind your friends and mistakes, come today. There's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade every joy from the ashes and new life.
Josh. Oh, in my sense, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole Thank you, Father, for the food that's going forward, Father God. Father, today, Lord God, we lift an offering, Father God. Yes. And for my brothers, just that you know, this offering we take up, Father God, that my brothers, we 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 present it, Pastor takes it, and he blesses us with the food, and it all goes towards the food. Nothing else but the food for us today, guys. You know what? Pastor, stay like we got Brother Anthony out there. We're cooking. We're gonna have some tri tip. Amen. And you know what? This is the church we are in. Our pastors, they like you for men's meetings. Hey, they put it all out, man. They want to. They want to bless. We're blessed with women that they like to cook for us and they like to see the best for us. Amen. Yes. They put all their hearts into it. Amen. So as we give, as whatever God places in your heart. Just I want you brothers to know that money goes all the time in back into the food. Yes. And that's what's given back to us. Amen. 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 So Come on. Thank you all for being here today. Yes, and thank you for your giving. And you know what? We're, we're a church that's blessed. You know, we invite everybody to come, different churches. And as you've been coming here, an iron sharpens iron. Yes. Oh, yes. Everybody that's a part of this church, we're blessed to have you as men. Amen. Come on. Amen. We thank you for your coming. Woo. We thank you that you come and bring your breath with us. Hallelujah. And we just want to give it to God. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Father, for this offering. I pray over each soul today, God, as they sow, Lord God, into. Father God, this offering, Lord God, that you would just continue to bless them, Father God, in their ministries, in their churches, Father God. Thank you for the my brothers that are here, Lord God, that they place your house in the heart. Father, I pray over every soul today, God, that your needs will be spread over them and that you continue to bless in their finances today. 
job. Thank you, Father, for drawing us all together. We're all one body to you, God. And Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for everybody that participates here today. I thank you for the man of God that's outside preparing that food, Father God, for our for our stomachs, Father God. Yes. I bring blessings over here and his marriage and his home and everything yes. he does, Father God. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing today, God. Thank you, Lord. God, we bring blessings over this offering. Yes. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Oh, yeah.